All right, thank you all for being here tonight. A <clears throat> little bit of church news. Everything is exactly like it was. We will continue to be not meeting together in person. We will continue to be watching online. Thank you all for uh, watching every episode that we do, every service we have. Um, be sure to check out the other services while you are locked up in your home. Okay? Now, tonight's message is hopefully going to show you the humanity and the deity of Jesus Christ. In thinking about this time that we're living in, it is a um, very bad storm going on around us all. And it reminds me of the time when Jesus calmed the storm. They were working hard doing the things that Jesus' ministry was designed for. And they got on a boat, and this is found in Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. And it says, He got into the boat, and His disciples followed Him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke Him, and they said, Lord, save us. We're about to drown. Now, let me tell you this. When you are on a boat and you have the ability to go to sleep, you are probably pretty tired. Now, to be able to go to sleep and a storm appear and the water is crashing over the sides of the boat and tossing the boat back and forth, you got to be pretty much out of it to stay asleep through all of that. Jesus was exhausted. He had been going around doing the work of His ministry, healing people, touching people, saving people. And all of this traveling was done on foot and it, it had wore Him out. It showed His human side. There ain't nothing that we will ever go through that Jesus Himself hasn't gone through. Anything that you face in life has been something that Jesus knows what it feels like. He knows what it's like to have gone through that thing. You have never experienced something new or different that God doesn't know about. Everything that Jesus went through, even His tiredness, is evident right here in this Scripture. So the disciples, they got scared. And a lot of them were fishermen. They had been on this Sea of Galilee many, many times. They knew that the way that the land was formed and how the mountains were. It's kind of like it is out in California. The wind would get to whipping and, and, and build up momentum as it come off those mountains down into the, the flatness of the water, and it would cause these storms to come and these massive waves to come sweeping over, boats and things like that. It wasn't nothing new to them. They themselves had seen this before, and yet it still scared them. And they said, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. So Jesus said, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then He got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and they asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey Him. Here Jesus is showing His deity. He's showing that He is human and He gets tired and needs to rest, but He is also God and He has command of the wind and the waves. Now, notice how He rebuked these guys. His buddy. They and were thinking that they're going to die. And they wake Him up, interrupt His rest, and they say, Jesus, save us! We're going to drown! The boat's flipping and a flopping, it's tossing back and forth, and we don't, we're, we're not going to make it. So Jesus wakes up, and He looks at him, and He says, Oh, you of little faith. Now let me tell you this. Any amount of faith that you have is not going to change God's mind. Okay? See, that's teaching the doctrine of man. If you think that you can do something 
that's going to change God and change God's mind, that's just not so. That's giving yourself a lot more credit and a lot more power than you really have. What Jesus is trying to get these guys to see is that with faith comes these things that God only can give. When you believe that God can calm the sea, you will see that it was God that calmed the sea, not you. When you believe that Jesus Christ is the one that can bring a healing, when you see the healing, you will know because of the faith that you have in Him that it was Him that brought the healing. That's why sometimes, despite all the faith we have, as strong as our faith is, and we would bathe something in prayer over and over and over again, and still our prayers are not answered the way that we want them to, don't ever, don't ever think, well, I guess I didn't have enough faith for this to work out. Having faith in God means that you trust in God. And when you trust in God, that gets you lined up with God's will. That no matter what takes place, you have faith that in the end it's going to be all right. See, when we start placing our faith in our prayers, we place our faith in, in us doing things, we're going to have our hearts broke. We're going to be let down. Because we are mixing our humanity and our understanding and our, our way of figuring things out. We're trying to mix that with a perfect Almighty God. These guys were supposed to have the faith that even though the storm was there, it was going to be all right. They were in the presence of God. Side of that. I myself, I'll admit this, I have been in the middle of a storm and taken my eyes off of Jesus, taken my, my focus off of God, and then I tried to come up with enough faith to get back to where I felt like I was supposed to be. And it don't work that way. God started changing me and helping me to see that my faith in Him, I'm saved by grace, by faith. All I'm supposed to do is place my faith in Him and watch Him. God said, be still and know that I am God. Watch what I do. If you really trust me, if you really have placed your faith in me, get on board with me. Don't try to get me on board with you. And this time that we're living in, there's people dying all around us, and there are people in authority that are trying to say, well, you need to do things this way, and you need to do things that way. And The only way that we should be deciding to do things according to God's way. Not your way, not another man's way, or another woman's way, God's way. And when we do that, we are exercising our faith. We are using that gift that comes with faith that I am able to trust an almighty God who knows where I've been, knows how I feel, and yet still is going to do what's best for me. Hey, the best thing for me would be to die. To check out of this place and go to my permanent home. That is the best, most merciful thing that God could do for me. And yet at the same time, we're afraid to die. Things start messing up. My wife got diagnosed with lupus a long time ago and the first rheumatologist that she saw told her that she just needed to have more faith and that she would overcome this. <laughs> I wanted to say, you moron, what is wrong with you? But I didn't. I was a young preacher then and I was still trying to watch my mouth. But now, when I see a moron, I'll probably tell him. Yeah, you're a moron. Life's it's short. It's running out. So, 
we got to start making the most of every day. <laughs> Rebuke one another in love and kindness. I love you, you moron. You special, special moron. That's biblical. Well, we're not supposed to call them fools. Anyway, sometimes our lack of faith is evident. Sometimes it's not. And when your faith is is down, when it's when it's hurting, when it's not where it's supposed to be, when you don't feel that closeness with God, it's not God who moves, okay? There's something wrong with us. So what can cause you to get scared in the middle of the storm? I'm glad you asked. First thing, you ready? Ready? The first thing that can cause your faith to shrink is sin. When you are doing wrong, you will not feel close to God. You won't. You will not. When your heart is filled with anything other than the Holy Spirit, when what is on your mind is not the glory of God and how can I glorify my God, how can I have faith in God, how can I live for God, when that's not on your mind, your mind is usually on something dark, something else. And then you wonder, well, I thought I had faith. I guess I didn't have enough faith. No, you didn't have enough faith. You got sin. That's what you got. So sin could be the reason why storm is overwhelming you. Hmm? And also, you're going to love this one, human nature. Oh, I'm a nature lover. Human nature, I love to watch it. We go to Disney World, try to at least once a year, and we watch human nature in its uh, most precious form there. Um, there's a, it's very obvious what is on people's hearts and minds when they are in that atmosphere. Because it is hot, there are lines, there are way too many people in the way. It's like going to Walmart the day after Thanksgiving or the day that you think you need 80 rolls of toilet paper. It's going to be crazy. So you see people's true character come out. The human nature that is inside of all of us is supposed to be under the control of that new spiritual nature we receive when we are born again. When you are born again, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. You are a new creature in Christ. But that human nature is still there. And that thing will sneak up on you and it brings with it fear, stress, worry, anxiety, all the things that hurt your faith. Faith simply means I trust you, God. Satan, the prince of the air, the prince of this earth, not king, the prince, he knows exactly what it takes to hurt your faith. This joker's running around getting people infected with a virus now. You know what he got people thinking about? You can't call it this. You got to call it this. And you can't call it this. You got to call it that. And grocery stores are going to run out of stuff. You placed an order at Walmart when you picked it up. They didn't give you the right thing. They said they were out. The world's going to end. Power's going to go off. We're going to have to cook over sticks. We're going to have to hunt animals out in the neighborhood. And we're just, we're going to die. We're going to have to eat grass. That is no different than these guys on this boat saying, God, we're afraid. Will you help us? And Jesus says, you have little faith. Whenever anything takes away from your faith, Satan is winning. Let me give you another example. Same sea. Same body of water. 
the Sea of Galilee. It's in Matthew chapter 14. A lot of people know this story. It says in Matthew 14, 22, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of Him to the other side after He dismissed the crowd. Here once again Jesus was tired. And He wanted to be alone for a minute. So He told them, Y'all get in the boat and go on out to the other side. I'll be there directly. So, they set out in the boat. And after He had dismissed them, He went up on a mountainside by Himself to pray. When evening came... He was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Once again, there's a storm on the Sea of Galilee. Storms keep coming. They're never going to stop. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw Him on the lake, they were terrified. They said, it's a ghost! It's a ghost! They were crying out in fear. A ghost on the lake. There's a ghost on the lake. Jesus told them, y'all go on ahead. I'll catch up with you. I'll be there directly. And the moment they see Him, it's a ghost. God has told us how things are going to unfold. He has told us how it's going to be, and He told us to just have faith in Him. But instead, we start dreaming stuff up. God could tell you the sky is blue, and on any given day, your human nature would take over and you'd walk outside like, the sky is green, and the grass is blue. Why? It's because we are human beings. We are not the smartest of all time. That is God. And sometimes we think that we are. And we make a mess of it. So, Jesus told them, He immediately said to them, take courage and do not be afraid. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come out to you on the water. He called Him Lord. He knew it was Him. Why is Peter wanting to walk on the water with him? He wants to be the favorite. Peter was exercising his faith. Because all the rest of the afraidy cats did not even want to get out of the boat. Peter did want to get out of the boat. So he was like, look at my faith. Jesus, let me come out there where you are. Let me show all these other folks what real faith looks like. I'm not afraid. You just thought he was a ghost. You ain't ever walked on water before. Now you got all this courage. That's right. Call me out there, Jesus. I will exercise my faith. So, verse 29, Jesus said, Come. And Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. He is showing, I trusted you, Jesus. I got faith in you, Jesus. I'm on the water. I'm walking on water. This is not natural. So you know what he does? Sinks. My knees just popped. Verse 30 says, But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. Now listen to this. This has always bugged me. He saw air. Do you understand this? If there's ever been something to be afraid of, there wasn't no trees swaying. I understand that there was waves and the wind causes more waves. But it says that he saw the wind. He saw air. And the air was enough to shake him up and hurt his faith. So what did he do? 
He was afraid and he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me! (laughs) Immediately Jesus reached out His hand and caught him. And what did He say? You of little faith. Why did you doubt? Now, this is the second time on the Sea of Galilee that a storm, the wind has blown and rocked the boat and caused some fear to come up in these people's minds. And they, they just freaked out. Their faith was hurt. This shows the deity of Jesus Christ. If you would trust in me, I can calm the storms. If you would trust in me, I have dominion over nature. He also has dominion over human nature. Jesus Himself can give you peace that passes all understanding. He can give you calm when things are not calm. Jesus Christ can remind you of the hope that He made possible on Calvary's cross when you feel like you ain't got no hope at all. God is not far off, but there is a great gulf fixed between us and Him, and it's because of sin. When you place your faith, your trust in Jesus Christ, He came down here and died on the cross because God demanded that blood had to be shed to pay for sin. That's the only thing that could cover up sin because it's that bad. Jesus came down here and shed His blood that whosoever would believe in Him and trust in Him and place their faith in Him they would be forgiven of the sins. They could live forever, have an eternal life. So now that big gulf that was fixed between us and God, Jesus has bridged the gap. Now we have a way to Him, and it is by faith that you were saved. Trusted in Him. You don't deserve to be saved. You don't deserve the hope that God gives. You don't deserve the peace that He gives. We deserve to pay for our own sins because of our human nature. But instead, Jesus paid a way where we can have all those things. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Jesus gave it. That's what grace is. I place my faith in Him and it's because of the grace of Jesus Christ I have been saved. The storm has been settled in my life. Uh, There's another storm coming. On down the road. You know how I know? Because Jesus said so. And He has promised me that if I will place my faith in Him, when that storm comes, He'll calm it back down too. Storms pop up. Jesus says, trust me. I say, Kinda. Like, okay, we're just going to toss you around a little bit. We're going to get you all freaked out and anxious and nervous and fearful and everything else. Do you trust me now? I want to, but I'm, I'm afraid. That's not faith. Faith is trust in Him. How many marriages do you think last when the trust between a husband and a wife is just kind of, sort of? I mean, I have never done a wedding where the vows were, you know, until we can't stand each other anymore, I will take you and I'll believe half of what you say and I will be afraid that you're going to lose your mind um, till death or natural disaster do us part. I don't know what we're doing. We're just getting married so my mom will quit nagging me. That's not a good relationship. A relationship should be built upon love and trust. I can't live without you. I I want to be with you all the time. The thought of not having you in my life makes me physically sick. That's what God wants. I mean, that's how He loves us. He loves us so much that He made a way 
that the storms in our life can be calmed down. So when Jesus says, you have little faith, why did you doubt? He's talking not just to Peter. He's talking to all of us. So then, when he climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those that were in the boat worshipped him, and they said, truly, truly, you are the Son of God. In this time, this storm that is going on in the world today, people are looking to Christians, the children of God, the ones that say they have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Christians, people are looking at you and they want to see if your faith is strong enough to calm the storm. You keep saying that God will save us. Jesus will help us. This too shall pass. You keep quoting Scripture, you're putting it on signs, you're putting it on Facebook and everything else. But is the storm still just tossing you around? Or is your faith real? I think now is an opportunity from God to show the world that you have real faith. That's what we need to take it as. Twice on the Sea of Galilee, the wind blew, the storm raged, and Jesus calmed it down. If He'd do it for them, He'll do it for us. All He wants us to do is trust Him. Just have faith. So in this time, do you trust Him or not? If you're struggling with that, what's hurting your faith? Is it sin? Is it your human condition? What's the problem? Let Him calm that down too. I thank you all for watching. Hope this helps you. And uh, we'll see you all again Sunday.